Well, when it came to the issues driving voters this midterm cycle, pollsters largely got it right. High inflation and the economy dominated views in the election, but social issues like abortion still played an outsized role. Monmouth University Polling Institute Director Patrick Murray joins me now to break down more of what went into New Jersey's race outcomes. Patrick Murray, good to see you, as always, especially after an election. Uh, there was so much talk leading up to this about a potential red wave. Any surprises from your end? Well, the thing about the red wave was that it was supposed to hit in Democratic areas, particularly in the Northeast and, and here in New Jersey, as well as as I was looking at around the rest of the country, is that we didn't see it at all. Um, the the districts, the new districts that were drawn by uh, the last after the last census, did exactly what they were designed to do. Um, so even though overall the statewide House margin in New Jersey for Democrats was smaller than it was two years ago, that uh, some of these incumbents, particularly uh, Kim in the third and uh, Cheryl in the eleventh and Gottheimer in the fifth, did better because their district was drawn to do exactly what it what it did. And and by the same token, that is why Malinowski lost. His mm -hmm. district was drawn because uh, to to be a Republican district, a small, a slight Republican district, and that's exactly what we saw in these results. Which means that the enthusiasm that people thought was going to really benefit Republicans did not. Yeah. I mean, there was enthusiasm on the Democratic side. There were Democrats who came out to vote for a whole host of reasons, uh, not the least of which is uh, because they believe in democracy. And I think that was a, a key thing that we learned from from this uh, the, from this race. Well, I am curious about that redistricting. Um, Tom Malinowski in the 7th District said as much, uh, even in his concession to Tom Kane Jr., that perhaps if those lines hadn't been redrawn to include those dozen or so more, uh, you know, red-leaning towns, he could have won this race based on the polling you did, well, which was not head to head, but issues, of course. Um, what does that tell us? I, I mean, it doesn't tell us anything, really. It tells us that, you know, somebody, you know, Tom Malinowski lost, and, it, and it's a tough loss. And you look for other ways to win it. But, you know, uh, Tom Malinowski won in a squeaker. Uh, two years ago when the House vote in New Jersey overall statewide was a Democratic advantage of 16 points. Uh, now it's only a Democratic advantage of about six points, which means it's unlikely that he, if the district was the same, that he would have been able to uh, emerge on the right side of that squeaker election this time around in the same district. But um, the, the key here that we found is that you know the, the issues that we saw were uh, a variety of issues that 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 Democrats needed to hit on to get all their voters out yeah. there. Um, and that made it uh, tougher in districts that were more competitive. Folks like yourself, Patrick, who have been doing polling, um, veterans in, in the polling industry, shifted some of the methodologies over these last few years. What did you find that worked well and didn't for this midterm election cycle as you were doing those surveys? What worked well was just simply looking at our fundamental methodology and saying, okay, what needs to be tweaked? Not trying to correct the result of the last election. And what we saw is that pollsters, particularly academic pollsters like Monmouth and Marist and Siena, did a really good job uh, with this election cycle. The pollsters that put their thumb on the scale because they just thought everything's going to be more Republican from here on out were the ones that were wrong because they were just they weren't basing their their shift on a methodology. They were basing our shift on a guess. Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute. Thanks, Pat. Good to see you. Good. Good to be with you, Brianna.